Hello. Hi. Jesus. Hi. Jesus. Hi. Jesus. Hi. No one will ever understand why Jesus came on this earth and he did what he did. No one will ever understand. The only way you can understand it is when you reflect on one principle that he did on the Last Supper. After they had eaten, the Bible said, after they had dined and eaten, he took the bread and he took the cup and he said, this is my body and this is my blood. He was instituting something that is very powerful, which has got three principles. Number one, he picked up the leftovers. That is the message why he came from heaven on earth, is to pick up everybody who is left over in society, in life, in politics, in organization. And that's exactly what he came to do. He came to pick up the leftovers. And I know there are so many leftovers in every society, in every organization, in every class, in every nation, in every group, in every organization. They are those who are left over. He took the leftover bread and the drink and he said, this is my body. This is my body. And you all know that his body is us, is the church. You are the body of Christ. So I don't know who has left you over. I don't know who has rejected you. I don't know who has not considered you. But I want you to understand one thing. Jesus came for you. After all is said and done, he's going to use the rejects of society. He's going to use the rejects of, of organizations. Those who are left over on the sides, those are the one he's picking. And he's picking you today in Jesus' mighty name. And I know for sure that he will be able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that which you even think or ask never consider yourself a reject that God cannot deal with you God Almighty is capable of working miracles with you and he will take you to a level you have never known before when I look back and I see Jesus seated on the dining table and he's eating with his disciples I learn a second principle Jesus Christ was a person who knew how to recognize people. He didn't want to leave his disciples hungry. He's the one who feeds masses. Not only physically, not only with food, not only spiritually, but he made sure that he organized a beautiful dinner before he could actually do something. He's a mighty God. He's a powerful God. He know how to serve people. Because he knew for three days the disciples were not going to eat anything. They were not going to have anything to eat. Because number one, the Roman government was looking for them. The religious leaders were also looking for them. So they went to hiding. And whatever they ate lasted for three days. You cannot think about it, but think about it, child of God. These men were fasting. Whether they liked it or not, they were in hiding. And that is very, very important. People have got to understand that we're on the Last Supper. We see a people who are prepared to go through the most scary moment of their life. Secondly, he took this and he called it the Holy Communion, where he communes with us. And he took the bread and he took the wine. 
If you look at Genesis chapter 14, that's exactly what he gave to Abraham. He gave him Holy Communion. And then he gave him seven blessings. People of God, because Jesus Christ died and rose again, we have the seven blessings, which are found in the book of Revelation chapter 5. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And he said, now he has released after the Lamb of God was slain. Hey, child of God, he gave us seven blessings. One is power. Two, riches. Three, wisdom. Four, strength. Five, honor. Six, glory and seven blessings. These blessings are for you today as we take Holy Communion. In our ministry, we have seen people take Holy Communion and they've been healed of cancer, healed of diseases. My own daughter was suffering from cancer and the Lord told us that we give her Holy Communion. We gave her in the morning, lunchtime, in the evening as medicine. Yes, we took it as medicine. We gave her medicine in the morning, Holy Communion, medicine lunchtime, medicine three times a day for seven days. And the tumor that was logged on her brain began to detach. And that's why God began to heal her completely by the power of God. There is power in Holy Communion. And I want to decide and, and share this with you. Please learn how to take a Holy Communion. We are coming out with some things that are gonna help you to take Holy Communion anytime, any moment, anywhere. People of God, religion has made a religion out of this. Jesus took bread and, and wine, which is something we do normally. He said, as you take your meal on a daily basis, so take Holy Communion. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember Jesus Christ as our healer, as our savior, as our deliverer. We remember the one who brought the glory of God to the rejects of society, the leftover, and now he lifted it to be his body. Jesus wants you to be his body, he's choosing you. He took the wine, which represents the blood, and the blood of Jesus Christ is more stronger and powerful than anything you have ever known in this world. The blood covers us, the blood cleanses us, the blood heals us, the blood changes us. Lastly, he was dipping the bread in a bowl, and Judas came and dipped the same bread in Jesus' bowl. What he didn't understand, familiarity is always what causes us problems. We think because Jesus was a, of a tribe of Judah and Judas was also a tribe of Judah, he thought they were just brothers. He can do to Jesus anything he wants to do. People in this world who are going to miss the greatest opportunity of a lifetime, do you know that Judas did not take Holy Communion? He ate with Jesus, but he was not there when Jesus was giving Holy Communion. Neither he was not there when Jesus was washing the feet. There are many things that Jesus did in that room that I pray he will do them to you. That he will wash your feet. Your feet is your walking. That your walk with the Lord will be clean. That your walk with the people will be clean. And that he will have a ball. You don't have to dip the bread with Jesus. Honor him. Give him what belongs to him, your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your body. Give him what belongs to him. Let him be honored. Whenever we honor God through our tithe and offerings and our first fruit, we are honoring him. Whenever we take what is belong to Jesus, his glory, even if you are in a miracle ministry like I do, every time I tell people that when you see miracles happen, it's not Robert Kayanja. Robert Kayanja cannot heal the sick, cannot remove cancer, cannot open eyes of the blind. Only Jesus can do that. So don't dip your bread. Don't dip your bread. Bread is the body. Don't take your body in what Jesus calls his. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. And give him strength. And lastly, Jesus washes the feet of the disciples. Simon Peter, wash my body because I need to be clean. He said, no, I'm dealing with your walk. Child of God. If the blood of Jesus has ever saved you and you are born again, you don't need any other salvation. But you need to perfect your walk with God. Let us walk softly with God. Let us walk powerfully with God. And let's walk and do the things of God. Our lives will never be the same again. The Last Supper, the Holy Communion, the name of Jesus, the blessing of God, the washing of feet, may it happen today. You are no longer rejected. You are beloved of the Lord. God bless you. Hey, 
I have something to tell you. One of you will betray me. The one who dips in my bowel will betray me. I tell you. Whatever you're doing, me three times. No, master. I can never deny you. No. No, master. No. This is my body that is broken for you. Remembrance of me. This is my blood that was poured for you. Drink it. Remember me. His death gave us more victory than even when he was alive. You say, what are you talking about? Because our Lord Jesus Christ went on doing good because he was anointed by God. But he was anointed for his burial 
And when he died, he said, it's finished. The earthquake took place. When he was born, there was no earthquake. When he was baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the river Jordan, there was no earthquake. But the moment he died, the earth shook because something was going on. He was chasing every devil and Satan was going in the heads to hide. But Jesus died and went to the hell and that's when he got the keys of the kingdom. And he took it from the powers of darkness so that you may have life. His death gave us more victory than ever before. When your dream and when your life seemingly to be dead and your company and your organization seemingly to be dead, the whole world think it is over with you. But when you come back to life, when you have broken the powers of darkness and the powers of heads, that's where you achieve more grace and more anointing and more power of the Holy Spirit. Child of God, his death brought a new chapter that man does not have to die forever. We can come back in three days. The master of all masters, the healer of all healers, the deliverer of all deliverers, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, destroyed hell and death. He brought the power there was, revealing the glory of God. And the Bible said, when he went to hell, everybody who had died, including King David and others, they all rose when he went to hell. Oh, child of God, they were seen in the city of Jerusalem for three days, walking and talking and moving into the glory of God. Child of God, his death and resurrection brought us more glory than ever before. It revealed that God has more power than anybody can believe. Glory be to God Almighty, because His death gave us victory. His death gave us power. It released the keys of the kingdom in our hands. And today, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever we lose on earth is loose in heaven. Because the master died. The master was buried and the master became alive again. Glory to God. That is the glory of God. That's what we are talking about. Child of God, sometimes things have to die. Unless a seed dies, it will never bear fruit. That's why when we talk about from the time Jesus was betrayed from to the time he died on the cross and to the time he rose again, I'm telling you, we see the power of the seed. Jesus was the seed of God given to us through love. And he had to be buried. He himself said, as Jonah was buried in the bury of the whale, I, son of man, must be buried in the grave. But on the third day, he will rise again. Child of God, your poverty is coming to an end. Your diseases are coming to an end. Your cancer, your tuberculosis, your COVID-19, whatever disease is bothering you or killing your business, it can come. Death is not the end of the chapter. Death is not the end of your life. Anything that has died has the ability to grow like a seed planted in the ground and it comes up and bear corn and feed multitudes of people. I pray today that God's power that raised him from the dead will come and resurrect your dream and your vision and your body and your life. And whatever is ravaging your body, whether cancer, diseases, poverty, sin, it will be broken today. I release the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ. You will never, never, never be the same again. Glory to God. He broke the powers of darkness. He destroyed every forces of evil. And now Jesus Christ of Nazareth is alive. The Bible said the day he rose from the dead, child of God, another earthquake took place. Early in the morning, child of God, I love early in the morning. The angel came from heaven and rolled away the stone. Mary, the mother, spent three days trying to see her son, uh, you know, come back to life. Actually, she was thinking about embalming him more, keeping him in the grave. But Jesus Christ was already resurrected. The stone had been rolled away. Today, the stone that is broken you from life and the next chapter, I pray that it rolled away today. It rolls away today. It's rolled away by the power of God. And Jesus was dead and cold in the grave, rose again, and he came out alive in victory by the power of the Holy Spirit. And today we have an empty tomb. We literally have an empty tomb because our master is alive and is alive and is alive and well. In Jesus' mighty name, child of God, he brought us the keys of the kingdom. Now whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven therefore i bind every sickness and disease and i release the wisdom of god and the power of almighty god and your life will never never again 
Jesus came and showed himself to men to Emmaus. He showed himself to the men in the grave. Remember the death napkins. He left them in the grave. He rolled them over and put them on the side. And the master who was dead became alive in Jesus' mighty name. Now, I don't know where the clothes that he was dressed came from. Child of God, when you overcome death, you'll be dressed in the glory of God. The same garment that Adam had before the sin came. Those are the garments that go through the wall. Those are the garments that come from everywhere. Our Jesus is alive and he is alive and well. Glory be to God. He was revealed to everyone. And everybody saw him in the city. And the men saw him in the city. And he said to Mary Magdalene, don't touch me. I have not gone to the Father. Child of God. He presented his blood. He presented himself alive. Proving that God has overcome the enemy of all enemies the old devil Jesus Christ is alive let's tell the story let's tell the good news people don't have to die in sin people don't have to die in pain people don't have to die in poverty Jesus Christ is alive for the glory of God the grave is empty the grave is empty child of God I was in Israel I was in Israel some time ago and I stood in that empty tomb and I realized it is still empty. <laughs> After 2000 years ago, I have to tell you, you don't have to die. Your business and your dream does not have to die. Today is the day of resurrection. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead and by the anointing of the Holy One of Israel that you will bless every man and every woman and you take them to a level they have never seen before. Thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for giving your life for us. Holy Spirit, thank you for raising him up. Therefore, raise everybody who is believing in you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now start doing what you could not do before. Put your eyes on the blind eye in the name of Jesus Christ. Put your finger on the deaf ear. Touch where the tumors are. This is the hour of miracles. This is the hour of resurrection. I command your body to line up with the power of resurrection in Jesus' mighty name. I have seen Jesus Christ alive in over 81 nations of the world. For from Tonga Island to Hawaii, from Johannesburg to Moscow, I have seen Jesus Christ heal the sick, and I've seen him in 77, 77 days of glory. I've seen him among the blind, among the deaf, among the black, the white, the Chinese. He is alive, and he is still alive in Jesus Christ's holy name. Be blessed today, be healed today, for Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Have a blessed resurrection life in Jesus' name. Amen. We would like to thank you for joining us today. We're not just a church. We're a family. We're a community. And we want you to be a part of it. You may not be able to physically join us, but you can be a part of our e-family and join us online at any one of our services as well. You can follow us on social media and be a part of what God is doing here and around the globe. You can follow us on our Instagram page. You can follow us as well on our Facebook page. And we go live there every day with our revival services. And you can also watch everything on YouTube as well. We want to say that we love you and God is doing amazing things in your life. And the days of glory are right in front of you. COVID-19 hit a lot of people hard in 2020, but it is still causing devastating damage to a lot of people. And we want to be able to take not only spiritual relief, but tangible relief as well. We know that God can do miracle signs and wonders. For only $15 a month, you can feed a family of four and not just feed them, but get them the sustenance they need to do well in this pandemic. We know that God is awesome and we know that he is moving in a mighty way. And we know that God is going to touch and impact your life as he has been doing so throughout this revival and throughout the many years of this ministry. We love you so much and we wanna be connected with you. So thank you and have a blessed day.
project was an outreach program started by this ministry. It was started to help feed the people of South Sudan, but it was later revived in 2020 to help people struggling through this pandemic. We've been able to feed thousands with food and get them the basic amenities they need. And also by doing this, spread the name of Jesus, because that's what it's all about. We're not just taking them food as well. We're also getting them soap, cleaning supplies, a bucket that they can use, and many other amenities as well. Many people are struggling during this season and they need as much help as possible. So if you go to our website and donate, whatever amount can be a huge help. Our goal is to take the love of Jesus everywhere, but also help in a practical and tangible way for those that need it.